Today I'm going to show you how to do a cheap budget build of a gaming tabletop that you can throw down on top of your kitchen table and you can stow away when not in use. It's easy to move around, it's easy to pack up, it folds, and it's got a few extra features just for ease of playability and quality and feel. And it's something you can build over time and you don't have to buy everything at once. So let me show you what I did. Now here's the most basic iteration of this. All it is is some two inch thick foam board insulation that's duct taped together through the middle to make a hinge so it folds away. Goes right on top of your normal kitchen table, but when you don't need a seven foot long table in your room, you can just put it in the closet, in the spare bedroom, in the garage, whatever is convenient for you, it goes in my basement. Now this already has a ton of cool features built in. You use the two inch insulation, and it's pretty rigid. You don't have to worry about hanging over the edge of your table. It's gonna hold up just fine. It's lightweight, so you don't have to worry about like how hard it is to maneuver. If this was a seven foot long table, or in my instance, a six foot long table, these legs would be coming right to the edges. The way that this is built, you actually have the legs kind of set in where you're not as likely to kick them out in your smaller room that you're setting this up in. And the process of making this is as simple as it could possibly be. Here I took a four foot by eight foot sheet of Foamular Owens Corning two inch insulation. Now in the past I've used two foot wide segments of this sort of insulation because it's easier to get in a small car. In this instance I had to buy the four foot by eight foot sheet, but luckily this Owens Corning stuff comes with uh, pre-cut segments so that it was relatively easy to snap it into two two foot wide segments in the parking lot of the home store. This board of insulation cost me less than $60 and the duct tape was a dollar at the dollar store. The assembly is as terribly complicated as cutting the foam board down to the size that you want your tabletop to be, lining up two of the nice flat factory edges, putting duct tape along those edges, that's gonna act as the inside of your hinge, flipping the whole thing open, putting another piece of duct tape along the seam on the top, and now you've got this folding table. So much easier to handle than a full-size gaming table in a smaller house like my own. For this particular table, I made it 44 inches wide by six foot. Now, a game of Warhammer 40K is, of course, 44 inches by 60 inches. That extra 12 inches that I gave it in length is going to act as kind of six inch boarding zones on either end of the board so that deep strike units or kill counters, strategy cards, stuff like that can go on the edge of the table and not have to go somewhere else. From here, you can do something as simple as throwing down a gaming mat. I've got this great piece of upholstery fabric that I picked up on clearance at the local fabric store. I think I paid about 20 bucks for this, but the nice uh, mottled gray color and texture of it is gonna give you a quick pseudo concrete kind of look. You throw some urban terrain down on it and you won't ever know that you're playing on a bright pink table. But we can integrate this into the tabletop as part of our next set of modifications. Let's work on those. Now what I've done off camera is I've actually glued this fabric down to the top. I made sure that this fabric is glued down in the area that will be the playable battlefield for my games of Warhammer 40,000. So it takes up the 44 inches in width and only 60 inches of the length here. I use spray adhesive in this case because this is what I had on hand. You could use really anything that will glue to this foam board insulation. I cut off the excess, tried to keep everything in as straight a line as I could, and today I'm going to take some Mod Podge and I'm going to hit all the edges to help keep the edges from fraying a little. Important to note that I've got fabric glued on the inside edge as well so that I've got fabric on both sides in the same way that I had duct tape on both sides of the hinge portion of this table when I was using just the duct tape. Now the next step after I do some Mod Podge on the edges here will be to get something on this to keep it from sliding too easily across the table. I'm gonna use this grip liner here, drawer liner, whichever you wanna call it. You can pick this up at the dollar store for real cheap. I paid a few extra bucks and got a larger roll because I do use this for several different purposes. And it's good for what we're about to do because we're gonna use the same spray adhesive. It's going to keep us from pushing it around on top of whatever table we lay it down on. Naturally, I suggest doing this outdoors in a well-ventilated area. If you're using the spray adhesive, this stuff is awful for you. All right, now I know it's not the prettiest thing from the underside here, but I've got the drawer liner affixed, and now it won't slip around on the table. Let me show you. Now, the problem that I should have foreseen 
and I did not adjust for was where I double checked to make sure that the spray adhesive would interact well with this pink foam board. I did not double check to make sure it would interact well with the drawer liner and it did stay a little tacky afterwards. It took a few days for it to cure. Test spray with your product before you put everything together. Make sure it's going to work out right or just be willing to have the patience to wait a couple of days while that tackiness goes away. There's only one last thing that I'm going to do here. I had originally thought to myself, maybe I'll build some dice trays into the loading zones. Maybe I'll do cup holders, anything like that. But ultimately, I just didn't feel I needed to do the extra work. I've got plenty of surface for rolling dice. I've got other places to put cups. It's unnecessary. The only thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some black house paint and I'm going to paint these loading zones and I'm going to paint all of the edges to make everything just a little more aesthetically pleasing and tie the whole thing together. All right, and here's what we've got now that we've painted everything up. I went ahead and used this exterior black paint just so that I would have something really durable and resilient. You could use whatever you've got laying around. Now, for those of you who are playing along at home, the running tally here I'll keep over on this side of the screen for you as we're talking through what it cost. But bear in mind, this was a project that was spaced out over a couple of weeks for me and can take as long as it needs to take to complete. The most basic piece of this was the hard foam board and a little bit of duct tape to put it together so that you can fold it and pack it away. That four foot by eight foot sheet of two inch foamular cost me $53.97 plus tax. So it came to $60 and change after tax. Duct tape, as I said, I spent a few bucks at the dollar store. So the very core functionality of this, having a packable stowable lightweight expanding game tabletop that you can throw on top of your existing dining room table kitchen table whatever you've got whatever you're using it costs about 65 bucks that's going to give you the bare essentials version now doing the upgrades over time means that you don't have to spend all of the rest of the money up front i bought the fabric as i mentioned on sale so two yards of that to cover the tabletop cost me another $20. And then the spray adhesive is about another 10 bucks, depending on where you get it, depending on what brand you get. So it's going to cost you another $30 to put the fabric top on. Now there's a lot of benefits for that fabric top. It's really the biggest thing that you can do to improve this. Not only does it give you a good aesthetic look, it gives you a good color base to put your terrain down on, and it just kind of bumps up the level of finish on it and how nice it looks, but also it's gonna deaden dice noise by a ton compared to rolling on a bare table or the bare foam. And if you play any sort of game with cards at all, you're gonna have a huge advantage of the, the feel of picking the cards up. It's gonna be a lot easier to manipulate cards on that fabric top compared to trying to pick up cards off of just like a hard glossy laminate top that you have to like fight to get your fingernails under and then you can potentially damage your cards that fabric top's gonna help a lot with that. So better looks, better feel, better sound, better overall, another 30 bucks. Next up is the drawer liner. I wound up not sticking with this. I took it back off because it just, it wasn't playing nice with the spray adhesive that I had and the particular drawer liner that I used. If you did want to utilize that function, the roll of drawer liner that I used cost me seven bucks. I picked it up at TJ Maxx. They've got it at Walmart. They've got it at the dollar store. If you're going to the dollar store, I would suggest getting two of those rolls because they are much smaller and I did end up using a fair amount of the stuff, but that's going to help you keep the thing from sliding off the table. I don't have much of a problem with it anyway, so I'm fine with going without, but the other $7 there is going to take your $95 up to $102 to have a packable, stowable, lightweight, rigid, fabric covered, dice noise deadening, and uh, mildly immovable tabletop. The very last thing is the house paint. I spent a ton of money on this. I did not need to spend uh, 15, 16 bucks, whatever it was for the quart of black paint. I've got a ton of craft paint sitting around already. I could have gone to the craft store and picked up just some like lamp black for a few bucks. I wanted the extra durability of an exterior paint and I'll utilize it for other projects. So I spent the extra money either way. All told, this whole project came in under $130. And as I said, that was spaced out over the amount of time it took me to grab, you know, 20 bucks worth of stuff here, 20 bucks worth of stuff there. In the meantime, I had a playable tabletop 
the entire time and a usable surface from the day that I picked up that foamular insulation. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is build myself a terrain set. I really kind of got out of everything in 9th edition 40k and I didn't play a ton. I kind of moved on to other hobbies at the time. I've been building guitars and stuff, but now getting into 10th edition, I've got to rebuild a whole new terrain set and I've got to get my board battle ready. So the next thing we're doing is we're going to throw together a quick and dirty, cheap budget set of terrain so that we get a full tabletop of terrain with a relatively low down payment. And then over other videos, I'm going to bump up the quality and the level of detail on those and add all kinds of other things. We're also going to utilize the remnants of foam that I cut off of this panel to add some depth to the table and to do a little bit of extra building. And you will see those videos when I get them out. Hope to see you around.